Hello and welcome back to Where Are All My Friends. I'm so hype on this episode. It's been a long time coming and it is with my friend, Lil Aaron. We've been talking about doing this episode for a long, long time. We were finally able to make it happen. And I think the timing of it was actually perfect because he very, very recently did something absolutely crazy, which was sponsoring a NASCAR to promote his record label and his album. We talked all about it. This like all just happened. So the timing of it is insane. We also talked about the early era of Lil Aaron and Glowing Pains and how much the song Drugs changed so many things for him. We talked about his old house in LA and the amount of artists that stayed there and pieces that that brought together. And at the end, he shared a bunch of really great advice uh, to any type of creative or anybody who's doing a project that like you know your thing is going to work, but the world hasn't caught on yet. He had some really cool perspective to share about just continuing to do it and fully, fully go for it and how the world will catch on to that later. So all in, he just shared so much rad advice. I loved it. And if you like this episode and you want to do me the biggest favor, I say the same thing every time, but that's because it's that important and it's that helpful. But share this episode with a friend that you know that might like it. If you want to just share it on social media, that too is huge. Instagram stories, Twitter, wherever. I'm always looking out for it. I'm always reposting. And if you want to go above and beyond, rate the show on Apple Podcasts and subscribe wherever you're listening. That about says it. Enjoy an incredible episode. Where are all my friends? We did it. We made it. We did it, dude. In a, person. A year and a half in the making. We have been talking about this for so long. So I guess very briefly, anybody who doesn't know who you are, just who you are and what you do. Uh, Lil Aaron. I'm a songwriter, producer, artist. Uh whatever else you want to call me. Oh, um, according to Pitchfork, I'm a emo trap slime ball. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, <laughs> but I also uh, run like a little label publishing yeah. boutique thing that um, that I've been fortunate enough to like sign a couple of my friends to. So yeah. do, I do a little bit of everything. Yeah. And that's actually one of the things I want to talk about because yeah. like I feel… I feel like you could see Lil Aaron on the internet or on Spotify or just like as an artist and be like, right. oh, cool, like here's an artist. Right. And leave it there. But there's so, so much more than that. And I feel like yeah. that's where you and I are really nerding out. It's like, yeah, yeah exactly. like this one project is cool, but like there's so much. Yeah, more. exactly. There's a lot. There's, it's funny because, you know, people always, I, my last EP, I did take a long time to put out, and I and I just kind of like not announced, but I like teased that I ha that I got my new EP like fully mastered, and everyone's like, "Oh, we're gonna have to wait another three years for it." <laughs> but it's like people don't understand that, like, fucking my everyday life. There's so many other things that I'm working on that, like, you know, sometimes it does take me a little bit longer to get a, a project done because I'm working on fucking eight other people's projects at the same time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the thing is like you're, I, I was going to say low key, but I don't even think it's low key. Like you write with and for so many people. You yeah. do have a label. You say like little thing, like yeah. you have a real label. Right. Like you proved the concept. You did it. Right. You're always discovering new music. It's my favorite thing is hearing some new shit that, I mean, I feel like as a creator, no matter what field you're in, like, it's so dope when you hear something that inspires you to make something. That's like part, that's the gasoline that fuels the fire, you know? I think yes, but I also think that that means that you're not jaded and you still love it. Yeah, I love music, you know? I, I don't listen to as much music as I would, as I used to, but that's because now I'm fortunate enough to be making it every day. So it's like sometimes after a long day of making music, you don't want to go lay in bed and listen to music. But check me out. Like I feel like you can you can hit a certain point where it's like we were literally just before this started recording, we were talking about like the evolution now of hyper pop. Right. Like it's not even just its own genre. Like there's it's evolving. Exactly. And we were both like, what the fuck? That's sick. Like this kid combined this, this, yeah, and this. Yeah. Whereas I think that you can hit a spot as an artist career where you do become that little more jaded and you like instead of looking at things being inspired. It's almost like, at least me from the outside, I, I see people as almost being threatened by it and they're just going right. to talk shit about it. Right. And I never see that in you. Like, Thank it's you. always just like, yo, like we were just talking, Justin Bieber, sick. So sick. This new evolution of hyperpop, sick. Yeah. I mean, you, if, even if you're hating on Justin Bieber. Even old school emo days, like you're sick. Like, yeah. I mean, we said this before, but it's worth repeating. If you're hating on Justin Bieber, you're just a hater. 
Actually. And nobody's too cool for Justin Bieber. No. That shit's just good music. It's just good. And yeah. that's like, I think that that's maybe something that people don't realize from the surface level of you is like, it's not just whatever pitchfork, what <laughs> emo yeah. rap bullshit. Like, yeah, you are so far past that. Yeah. I mean, and that's not like to shade anybody that does emo trap. You know, I love the genre. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of really cool shit in there. But but I would agree. I, f- I feel like I do a lot more than just that. It, I think it was really important for a second. Like yeah. emo trap as a whole needed to happen to disrupt the underground or alternative scene. Mm-hmm. Because I think like if you were to go to like the warp Tour scene, that was getting so, so, so stale. And then you had this next generation of kids that just wanted to make music. Mm-hmm. They were independent artists. Right. People weren't committing to bands. So then no. people started producing stuff in their bedrooms. Yeah. I mean, the workflow made so much sense that it was like inevitable, you know? It's you can do it from your bedroom. Someone in a different fucking state, different country even can just send you a beat and you fucking yeah. just record yourself. I mean, and that's kind of what's ha- what's happening. It's the same formula that's happening that I see a lot in these hyper pop kids. It's the same, like they're just making it from their bedroom, which is there's just a different. It's just like a different, you can't recreate that passion of like a fucking 15, 16 year old kid in their bedroom who's like making music in between homework. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah. it's, you, there's no way, there's no way to recreate that. It's like people in Los Angeles can hear that and be like, that's cool. I want to try that sound. But it's like, it's not the same as like the kid who just did it because and had nothing to lose or gain from it and just did it and put it on soundcloud or youtube or whatever you know yeah it just has an element of like being raw and authentic it's yeah like, it's the same way we go back and get nostalgic about our first favorite albums mm-hmm. from like bands first albums 100 that's them i think there's so gonna right. be a whole generation of kids who like look back nostalgically at like glaive and eric doa and shit like that as like yes. oh my god like when i first heard that the same way like i'll always look back on like Hit the lights and all time low and fucking those band, you know, met- the early Metro Station records, like Dude. that. Like every time I put them on, it just transports me to being in high school or middle school. You know, yeah. It's just like there's there's also like as a consumer, I always go back to this. As a consumer of music, like you have different stages of like music you like, but like I feel like you always go back to what you listened to when you were like thirteen to twenty. That's a very real thing. That's always going to be, you know, there might be bands you listen to when you're 22, 25, 28, but you're always going to revisit the ones you listened to when you were like just young and like yeah. full of. Well, like even us. Like, youth or whatever. We're you know. now like, we're still excited. Like we're embracing like all of. A hundred percent. But even though I hear this shit and I love it. When I, you know, if I'm drunk and with the homies, <laughs> we're blasting under oath and like like fucking the ready set and shit. Like we're playing like songs that bring us back, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that you also set a good example of that, of like, fuck being too cool for your roots. hundred. And it doesn't, like your roots don't have to be somebody else's roots, right? Like I went, we, through, I went through the longest phase of thinking I was too cool to be a Warped Tour kid or fucking, you know, like listen to fucking scene music, you know? I, probably like it was like right when I moved to LA I was like no I'm like you know I'm cooler than that I'm above yeah. that and then it wasn't it, like as soon as I figured out how to marry the new sound that I was listening to and my roots like that's when drugs happen and like obviously that's the spark okay I was literally just gonna bring that up because like you were saying that you think like Glaive and Eric DOA are gonna be that for people mm-hmm. I think that you were an important part of a certain evolution because right. drugs came out 15 or 16 I think it was the beginning of six. No, I somewhere. I think it was sixteen. Okay, yeah, because we're doing the five. The five year of it, or the five year of glowing pains will be this year. That's this really October. Weird. Five years of glowing pains. So like that, when that came out, I remember a friend showing it to me, and I was like, confused but excited, and like right. it was like one of those moments where it right. was like the marriage of of different genres. Right. And, you were really fucking early on that. Right. I agree. And that to me is really cool because I, I think that if, if artists like yourself didn't exist that kind of said, fuck it, I'm going to do something different right. in that way where you weren't too cool for your roots and you're like, I'm going to put these two things together. Right. 
that that can only happen if it's authentic. Right. And it felt And authentic. I mean it's funny that this sound is so popular now. Even like what happened with like bridging rap and pop punk mm-hmm. because when that shit first came out like people were like it was, cringing at yes, it, you know? Yes, exactly. And all the pop punk kids, all the rock, everybody was so offended by right. it. They were like what the I couldn't fuck? get on any I still can't get on fucking pop punk tours, but when that shit came out, I sure as hell couldn't. Do, okay, well, another funny callback is the reason we're friends is the Capstan boys. Right, exactly. Harry and Boz, you guys grew up together yeah. way back. I just showed you a picture of us. That was probably fucking eight or nine, maybe 10 years ago. I don't even know. So crazy. And I was managing them. Yeah. And we would talk and like I was guy in like pop punk world and you thought it was so cool. And I was like, what do you, what you're doing is cool. But like, right. I would legitimately try to help you. I'd be like, all right, what about this band or this? Yeah, and like, exactly. I would get so many no's and I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Like, he is blowing up. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Were too cool. Yeah. And people were scared to like associate because it was so new and and, you know, lyrically, I was saying things that traditionally you don't hear in pop punk music, which I always find funny because if you look back at like a lot of pop punk songs, and I'm not shifting the blame on anyone, but if you listen to back to, if you listen back to early cues, what we aim for, or fucking early the story so far, I, I have not said anything in my lyrics that are as misogynistic as what they said on a regular basis. Dude, that's actually true. Like but like go oh, I got called because I said fuck and bitch and shit like that and actually said the cuss word version of shit yeah, like instead you, of instead of saying some like weird poetic version of calling a girl a slut because she drinks and sucks dick. That's like literally every pop punk song from that era. Actually though, and you just said it, like you were just making it that much more obvious. You were just putting a hat on a hat where you're like, this is what it is. Yeah. The, it, here's the consumable version. Yeah. Here you and, go. and look, that's not to say like, you know, that that like I, I'm not blaming anyone and I'm not sh- shifting the blame but it, it was funny to see that like because I had trap elements in my songs and because there was a Lil at the beginning of my name yep. I got treated differently than all these the, a bunch of other artists that essentially sounded the same yep. but it was just dressed up a little bit different right However, I guess like I, I don't want to paint this little conversation here that you have some chip on your shoulder because here we are still embracing every genre, pushing oh, and it forward, I, all of that. Two, like, those, I love that. those two bands, by the way. I, I'm not I'm not fucking Yeah, Cute's one of your favorite bands ever, right? Yeah, even yeah. though like, you know, them as people, I'm them not close. Yeah, you I, have to draw different, that differentiation. I have to dr- the differentiate music that. that was made. But I think I'm allowed to do that when it comes to nostalgic music because I can't go back and change the fact that I had no idea when I was 13 that fucking shant or shant from cues what we for was a meninist but the music's good exactly exactly the melodies the fucking vocal performance amazing right but yeah so like that era i just think is cool because i think you did push something forward not only just with that music but i think back to when i first went to the mini mansion yeah and your house was a hub for artists like you you just feel like you're the opposite of too cool for things. Like every time I've that. seen you, every time, like where it could be like, oh, I'm this and I know this person and I've done this and this. Right. It's just not that. And like, you're like, yeah. I don't give a fuck who you are. Come over to the house, write music, hang with these people. Right. Like, you have been the catalyst for so many people becoming friends. Yeah, it's and crazy. Like, I don't know if that's talked about. Like, I feel like people know that, but I just, I really respect yeah, Some it. people know some things, but pe- people don't know the full extent. I mean, there's like, you know, a meme within my friend group of like, oh, so and so slept on Lil Aaron's couch. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I think some people like would get that joke, like, oh, so and so slept on the couch in the mini mansion. But you know, at large, I don't know how 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 many people realize, especially that house, how many people like stayed there and started there when they first came to LA and yeah. were just chilling there, smoking fucking joints and shit, and like just like. We were just like partying all the time, but working all the time and just like linking up with new people. And anytime someone would come to LA, if we knew them from SoundCloud or Twitter, they would come through the mini mansion and we would like cook up and hang out and play each other new music. And it was just like, it was just raw. It was just real. And it was just like, we were just, we weren't doing it on some clout shit. We were just like excited to hear what other people who were taking the same risks as us were making. Yes. You know, and I just I think that 
you, I think that that of Lil Aaron is so important. Mm -hmm. And I think that like that brought so much of music forward just by you being down for the culture and down for the community and and having right. that because like again right before we started recording you've been in LA for eight years mm -hmm. you came out here and you were designing websites right yeah like I mean just doing anything I could for like 50 bucks you know yeah like it's not like you just like instantly dyed your hair green and it was like oh cool I'm famous now yeah. we're good like you put yeah. in your hour no definitely I was I was couch surfing out here for a minute that's that was the main reason why like I wanted when I got the mini mansion, I wanted to put I wanted to give people a couch to sleep on because I understood the power of like if someone just lets you sleep on their couch, like where that where you can take that. Yeah. I saw in myself where I could take that, just people being willing to let me sleep on their couch. So I was like, fuck it, man. I'm gonna pay this forward as as much as I can because, you know, I'm nothing without the people that took a chance on me and 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 you know were generous enough to like fucking feed me and put me up and you know let me like pull the quarters out of their couch to go to 7-Eleven and buy a hot dog with you know Ooh. so like that that definitely always stuck with me and and I mean I mean I learned from my parents how to be hospitable um that was like a big thing in my household growing up is Midwest always lives, yeah sure. just the open door policy yeah so I've always had that with my friends it's like if you if you need a place to go like I also hate being alone and I love hanging out with my friends. So it's like that sick. Helps. Yeah. If you need a place to go, come hang out with me. I'm probably bored. That, you know? But yeah, like I guess like in all of it and I can't front like I was there every day or every week, but every time I was there, I felt that. And I just think that like it came from you authentically. It never felt like you were trying to like plant these pieces or being like, oh, I'm going to let this person stay here and work and leverage that. Like it was just yeah. you being like, yeah, like let's work. Like come just through. Hey. Fucking make cool shit. And, and even if it wasn't me making the cool shit, like it's when you're a fan of two different people and, and you're like, whoa, what if you guys made something? And then like you just get to put them in your living room and sit there and watch them make it. Like, that's fun. I don't even have to be attached to everything. I'm just feeling like, holy shit, two artists that I think are like the dopest up and coming artists are making a song in front of me. Like, do you this have any sick. memories of like a that happening? Like those early days of like certain artists coming together where you wouldn't ah, dude, expect it. I, I mean, it happens so many times in, in so many different ways. I mean, I think one of the funniest ones would be like McConan was was staying at the crib for a couple couple weeks. And like just like waking up to him playing his beats and shit and like playing songs and demos. And then one day I was making a song with uh with Y2K and Judge. And then McConan is like waking up, or like he was like sleeping on the couch while we were making it. He wakes up and and I was like, yo, you want to put a verse on this? And he's like, sure. And then just like popped up and did it. And like that to me, I was I was like kind of like, okay, like something is in the air here where like people are just open to like trying cool shit and and like there's no ego it's just like creating yeah um obviously that's an example that no, has me that. in it but but like it, there's so many times it would happen or like i would be gone you know what i'm saying because i was also touring a lot of the time and like i would be gone for the weekend during certain things so like i kind of would let the homies run it you know so i would come back and fucking you know who knows who is going to be there, you know, just, just people chilling and cooking up. And like, it was always cool to know too, that like, if I wasn't at the house, at least it was getting used for something. Yeah. You know, like I didn't want to like have this house in this studio setup, which by the way, was just like a couple speakers and a focus. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. It was but like, I, I didn't want to have this setup. And then like, if I'm not using it, it just like, goes to waste so like i always wanted the homies if i was going to the studio i would let the homies use my studio while i was while i was gone you know like that it just didn't make sense for it not to be you know yeah but i just i just i've always respected that about you is like it just feels so authentic and like you've you've done all of these things that have inadvertent inadvertently pushed the genre and music forward amongst right. what started as a small community and then went on to influence a ton of things right and that was just you being a homie. Like right. it, it was nothing past that. And I love that. Yeah. I just think that's cool. No, it was, those are, I look back at those days very fondly. Yeah.
I mean, that's how I met. Like, I remember being at that house and it was like the same. It was meeting Family Pet, Shinny, I think, uh, was FM there? Yep. Yeah. And like all of those, everyone, I, that was probably meeting Lotus. Probably. And Mike, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that was like all of that emo night day. Yeah. And it was all That was a house. crazy moment for, that was a crazy like timestamp in the whole story. Dude. Because that, that was, was special to you too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, dude. Okay. Like the impact of that weekend because everyone was flying into LA. Yeah. And it was like the first time because a lot of them had been there separately and this, but like everyone was there at one time and it was kind of like, okay, fuck. Like as a whole, like this thing is becoming something. Your house was like the baggage claim of LAX. Yeah. Of like everyone. Yeah. Facts. It, that was a crazy, crazy weekend. And then, Damn. yeah. Because I remember that as kind of like an outsider. Like, I didn't really know anyone. Like, I kind of loosely. Like, I think I had known yeah. you from stuff before. But, like, everyone coming together, I was like, wow. Like, these guys must all be best friends. And later on, I hear it's like all everyone of them. Was everyone was meeting each meeting. other. Yeah. 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 Crazy times. Crazy right. times. Shout out. For real, though. Shout out to Emo Night for, like, actually, allowing actually, that to happen. Yeah. That's, that's that was a That was a big day in the history of emo SoundCloud rap. I brought that up when Babs did my podcast. I really? was just like, yo, that was such an important day. I hope you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think they do. I mean, they've always been so supportive of of the scene and and like the evolution of emo music and that it yep. doesn't have to just be nostalgic. It yep. can, there's room for new emo music. Yeah. They've, I mean, I yeah. could go on for hours about know, how much actually, I love them. Same. Like it's Shout they, out TJ. Shout out Morgan. Shout out Babs. Yeah. 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 That's like, I, I could not echo that point even yeah. more. Some of the best people. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to pivot because this is a whole other side of you that I think is worth talking about. Outside of the artist, Lil Aaron, mm -hmm. you have written so many songs and written with few, so few. many yeah. people. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to keep track of at this point, but there's some crazy ones. Well, I feel like at this point, like again, to my whole overarching, overarching, arching, I think it's arching. I don't know. I swear I can podcast. I can work. <laughs> but like, I, it's almost to the point where it's like, you could probably not even do the Lil Aaron project and be fine just off of everything else you've done. Yeah. So no, it's I'd... further to my point of you're doing this because you love music. Definitely. Definitely. But like, tell me like as a writer and as like, what's that side of your life? I mean, honestly, uh, outside of the pandemic, that that was like, the majority of my of my day to day life was, you know, going to the studio and writing with another artist. Now I've gotten more into the production role, which is sick. So like also producing with, but I would say my my life between twenty sixteen and twenty nineteen was just going to the studio every day and working with an artist and or or just like a songwriter and a producer and like making making songs just for other people, not for me. Yeah. Um, and that was at least 80% of my day-to-day -day life was focused on that. And that like brought about like you, you now, like, can I make you sweet brag a little bit right now? Sure. Sure. So like that brought about you writing songs with, I mean, my biggest would be like Lizzo and big boy, black bear, um, Kiara, uh, Jeremiah, I'm, I always miss a few. Iconopop, Kim Petrus. Yeah, yeah. Didn't you have something with Selena Gomez too? Am Selena I? Gomez. That's, yeah. Okay. That's the biggest one. There I, we go. I forgot about that. Sure. Um, shout out to Selena Gomez. I can't keep them straight. It's not like I fucking have a list. Well, but what's crazy about that though, and this might pivot to another discussion, but like the first track of your EP. I feel like of your oh, new, EP, new EP, yeah, which I guess people will hear somewhat soon. I very hope. soon, very soon. Um, kind of expresses a little bit of your thoughts on that, and that's not throwing specific shade at anybody. Yeah, well, I, I teased that. I teased that one on Instagram. So even if, even if it's a minute before it comes out, people know about that one. That's okay. the PSA. Yeah, I teased the hook on Instagram, and kids love that. So, yeah, it kind of just expresses the like, you know. I've done it for other people. It's time to do it for me. 
Yeah. Well, it's like even again, right before I hate like always being right before we recorded, but like you met my roommate, Emma, Mm -hmm. and she is an artist and she had a ton of success writing with other people. Right. And then she went on to be like, no, like it's time to do me. Right. And that as a, as a person around music, but not an artist is Mm -hmm. so interesting to me. Right. Because from my eyes, I'm like, bro, like get your paper. You yeah, did yeah. it. Like 100%. keep writing like Selena right. Gomez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think there has to be something as an artist where you're like, dude, this is like, like what is like, I, I would, yeah, there has to be something in you where you're just like, I need to pursue this. Yeah. I mean, look, I don't think I'm ever going to stop writing for other people. And, and, and even though that's kind of the tone of that song, it's, you know, I still do it. Um, but, but it, it was kind of a self-reflective moment of like, yo, people are blowing up off of a genre that I helped create. Yeah. Like, it's time for me to get my fucking, to be able to have my cake and eat it too, you know? Yeah. It's kind of me just putting my foot to the ground and being like, fucking, it's, I'm I'm stepping up to the plate. Like, this isn't, like, not that I haven't been, no. but it's just kind of like demanding the attention of of the people who are of of everyone, you know? I just think it's so interesting because it's like you can't be too cool and too above things to pay your dues, right? Like right. you've been in LA for eight fucking years. You right. started making websites and doing anything. Right. You've written like you've never been too cool for things. You've said right. yes to these sessions. It's gotten you to these things. So it's like, it's not like I almost feel like you have to be down to do that to get to a spot of having the confidence to say, it's my fucking time. Right. And that's another cool thing that I respect. And I almost respect it more now as I think about it than just cashing in and continuing to be songwriter guy. Right. Um, because I think like, again, you and I both know the amount of songs and artists and culture that you have influenced or created right right that maybe don't have the little Aaron stamp on it as much as it could or should be right yeah definitely definitely there's a lot of it out there and it's not like you know it's not like everybody owes me this fucking shout out or a percentage of their money like I, that's, that's less what it's about it's more just like it's time to stop fucking around and like do what I do best and fucking show everybody how it's done again, you know? And it's, it's funny too, because I was thinking, uh, like listening to that new EP. And I think that like this album is talked about a fucking lot right now, but like MGK's album. Right. And I think he did a very good job of being like, look, pop punk and hip hop. And like, here's this marriage. And it felt like, the way that it should be and i think it's it's funny to now look at like pop punk and rock right now and be like damn y'all need to step it up because yeah and I, I kind of like i had this thing that i said where i was like cool mgk did it we don't need anymore it's done like people right. don't need to do that and then i heard your ep <laughs> and i was like well this is uh well, this is a little different and i'm pretty hype on this yeah, I mean, it was just, it's the first project that I'm putting out that I fully produced myself. No shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I produced it with Dan, Dan Garrity. What? Yep. Cool. Yeah, he plays all the guitars, all the bass, all the all the instruments are him. I didn't know that. That's sick. Yeah, all the, all the string instruments are him. And that's you again, an OG homie that you've been OG, with forever. OG, OG homie. Before I even lived in LA, I've known that kid. Probably 10 years now. That's so, that's awesome. Yeah. But damn, so you guys did that all. <sighs> yeah, we did most of it on a weekend trip in Big Bear. Wow. Yep. And then we also had uh, my boy JP. You know JP, right? From uh, Young and Divine. Oh. And then 7715. Why am I thinking, was it Astro? And Astro Safari. Oh, there we go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He's been in a slew of things. We, we, we lived together for the last year before I got my new house. Yeah. And then another part of your life and like everything coming together, I feel like in a good way is what you're doing with Hazheart. Yep. Because I think it's really easy to, well, actually, I remember a conversation where you and I, like I was kind of doing version three at the very beginning and you were doing Hazheart. And I think that you honestly did it better than me. And I think that something that you have that I realize as I look at it is like, 
it's so authentic and you're not a suit at all. Right. So for you to be in music the way you are, but right. also have a label, right. it's such a logical move where it's like you can be compensated, I guess, for finding and developing things fairly. Mm -hmm. But you're also not taxing people and taking away in some sketchy way where it's like, you get it. You get what it's mm. like to be an artist. You get where you can help people. You get where you can right. step aside. Right. I know what I did right. I know what I did wrong. I feel like I can, you know, not that there's a shortcut in any of this shit, but I can help people get where they want to go faster, you know, yeah. acceleration and keep the momentum up and make it so it's not just one moment and it fizzles away. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I also, like, I just think that like you as an artist and having been like, because you're more than an artist. You understand the business. You understand the songwriting side. You understand, I mean, look at the merch that you make. You you understand the touring side. So you are you know all of that. You've been in it for so long. And now you can bring in artists that you believe in and connect the pieces in like such, you can, you can connect pieces in a, in a more authentic way than any other label ever would. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching that happen in real time. And I'm like, this is the future. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, I agree with you. Let's let's <laughs> let's hope the public does too. This this podcast is just an hour of me gassing Lil Aaron up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, someone's gotta gas me up. Let's go. Um, you also sponsored a NASCAR. Yeah. Let's just get the elephant out of the room. Yeah. You sponsored a motherfucking NASCAR. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> How? Where did that even start? Where, where in your like thinking of it of like, what about a billboard? No, that's been done. Like, okay, here's how it happened. I can tell you exactly how it happened. Please. So my homie, Greg Long, who I was actually with right before I came here. Yeah. Um, he, he runs a record label. We are triumphant. He yep. does a, he's, he's been in the business. He hit me up Saturday night, two weekends ago. Well, I guess now it's three weekends ago. This is uh, recent. This is so recent, bro. And he, uh, he's like, you know, I'm about to drive down to Vegas. I forget. We were talking about something else. And he's like, I'm about to drive down to Vegas. And I wanted to go down to Vegas anyway because, you know, I, I knew some people down there and I wanted to say what's up and I needed to get out of LA. So I was like, can I just hop in the car with you? He's like, yeah, sure. I'm leaving in 30 minutes. Oh my God. I'm like, cool. So I threw together a bag. He scooped me. We go down. He's like, oh, I'm going down to go to the NASCAR event. Um, tomorrow morning and I like at the time I wasn't even thinking about going like obviously I would have loved to but I figured it was too late whatever and then you know as we're on the drive he he's like oh yo I just got you a ticket I'm like fuck it I'm yeah. going to the NASCAR event so we go to the race in Vegas the next morning um, and we're chilling and it's watching the race it's cool and then the homie Nate from my set my friends on fire wow he I like heard that name in a minute damn yeah. sick he manages a driver, Joe Graff Jr. And so he grabs us while we're like in the main area and he brings us up to the suite and we're hanging out up there with the driver and like, you know, a couple of the sponsors and we're just chopping it up, watching the race. Super dope. Great time. Um, and then, you know, as I was chopping it up with Joe and Nate, I was like, oh, these guys are actually cool. Like they're like, I would hang out with them, you know, like Joe you know he's a little bit younger than me but like you know i feel like we had some stuff in common so then the next day in vegas before we drive home we go grab lunch together and me and joe had posted a picture together and joe some, is the driver joe is the yeah. driver yeah and someone was like yo what if aaron what if he sponsors his car and i was like ah ha ha sick that'd be funny not even thinking it was a realistic it move. was legit just a comment and somebody was like, yeah. Oh, yeah and then fucking you know, Nate brings it up at lunch and I'm still like, yeah, this is cool. Maybe these guys think I'm way richer than I am. Like, I don't have fucking NASCAR sponsorship money. Yeah. And then, you know, then they start talking about it and they're like, no, we like, you know, we start talking over the next couple of days and like, we really want you to do it and all that stuff. And so we figured out a, a way to make it work. And, and, you know, they were, they were so, you know, helpful and, you know, they helped you know, everything fall into place and, and it was just, 
it kind of just, it, it, the opportunity arose. I called my team and brought it up. And my manager, Nick, is as crazy as I am. So he's like, yeah, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like, Shout out. You got to do that. He's like, worst thing that happens is you just spend all this money and we have this crazy story. And I'm like, true. Um, but it like took some convincing of my business manager because he's like, yo, you just bought a house. Are you sure you want to be throwing money at a NASCAR? And I was like, ah, I feel you. But then when I started thinking about it, I was like, okay. I'm going to film a music video with it. So I filmed a music video with the NASCAR. Oh, sick. So the photo that I saw on Instagram that looked like perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It makes so sense. So we filmed a music video with the NASCAR, which obviously, you know, makes it make more financial sense. And Will that then be for 808 Rock or? No, for the new EP. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then um, for the new Me and Lotus song. Oh. Yeah. Okay, cool. Which you heard. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so then I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. And then we put together, they, you know, we put together a whole merch drop. And then b- between those two things that like, and then obviously like, I, I didn't know how well it was going to go over, but like the internet ate it up. I'm still getting texts about it now. It's- and then I got a music video out of, it, out of it and a crazy merch drop and like pretty much made the whole investment back. So it was like, it ended up being one of the smartest moves that I've done. Because also I, I was talking, to, I was on FaceTime with Nick like right after I decided to do it. And I was like, just high as fuck thinking about shit. And I was like, bro, like there's no touring. There's no events. Like, it's not like I can go to an award show and wear a crazy outfit. Like this is my chance to like grab everyone's attention. This is my chance. And I have this EP coming like, I have to do it. There's nothing else. Like every other day, I'm just sitting at home. Like I'm working on music, but I'm not doing anything that like, you know, there's no, it was my, that was my like window of opportunity to like mid pandemic, you know, grab everyone's attention and be like, look, you know, and, and get people talking. And it worked really well. It Dude. worked really fucking well. So. Yes. And I just think that like, I wish more artists would think so differently or have those fuck it moments. Right. Because like, dude, the internet, like, I mean, I only saw it from my side, right? Right. I'm sure you're seeing more of it because you're the one getting tagged. Right. But I saw it and I thought it was Photoshopped. And I was like, that's funny. That's very on brand, Aaron. Yeah. I like it. Well, that was part of the plan too. I posted, (laughs) initially I posted a picture of like the mock-up of the car. Yeah. And I just captioned it, what if? Yeah. And so... And so that one was like obviously not real. And then like two days later, I posted a picture with the car. But the thing is, even though when I was with the car, people still didn't believe that yes. the car was actually going to be in the race. So it wasn't until Saturday at the race where I'm fucking posting on my story, the car on the track and in the pit stop area. You know what I'm saying? Where people are like, oh, this is a real fucking NASCAR. Yes. And yes. It said stream below Aaron on the back. It had yes. the hashtag on, Hasheart. on, on the side. And then Hazard.com had our whole merch drop. It just went perfectly. It was so well executed. Thank you, man. Like, we put it all together in 11 days. Chef's 11 days? We put it all together in 11 days. I put the merch drop together. I mean, shout out to my homies that helped design that. But like, I like coordinated putting the, the whole merch drop together in like three days. Actually, yeah. I mean, you're saying the story. You were driving to Vegas not that long ago. It, it, it had to have been that short. I mean, look, I can... I can tell you the exact, I can tell you how this breaks down. I'm going to Vegas. I'm on my way to Vegas on the third, no, on the sixth. Uh-huh. And then probably like the 10th or 11th is when we decide we're actually going to do it. Cool, five, Lock five, it in five. by the 12th. And then by fucking the 18th, I was in Charlotte where they have their garage filming the video. The 18th from you being in the car on the 6th? What do you mean? You said you were driving to Vegas on the 6th? Driving to Vegas on the 6th, yeah. Eight days. Yeah. Eight days from that impromptu trip, you are in Charlotte in the garage where they are applying the car delivery. Yeah. it's And dude, when I walked into the garage and saw that shit wrapped for the first time, I was like, yo, what the fuck is happening? How did I pull this off? Why do I, how did I get a fucking NASCAR with my logo on the fucking hood? You know? It was surreal, man. It was surreal. And like, I brought my dad out. Oh, I, I got cool. my, my dad and my brother came out to Atlanta to see the race with me. And like, my dad's a NASCAR guy. So he was so stoked on it. 
that's like your equivalent of like parents are always like, are you going to play the Today Show or like yeah, whatever? Like yeah. your dad's like, you got a NASCAR. And exactly. Stuff. And it's like, it fits the little Aaron brand so fucking yeah. well. Dude, like, it, it, it was like, it's funny because it was like almost, I mean, coming from Indiana, like Indiana is a racing state, you know, like we got the Brickyard, like people love racing out there. People love NASCAR. And it's I've been around it, it, it but it, it, it was like until the idea popped up, it was like, this is so genius. And and it, it was like, it just felt obvious. Like, why didn't I think of this before? But also like when when Joe and Nate posted pictures with me at the race in Vegas, they were saying about how all these dudes in the in the garage and in the in the pit crew were like, yo, little Aaron's here. So I was like, okay, if people working for NASCAR are fans of me, that means that like actual NASCAR fans are either gonna know about me or this will be a great way for them to find out about me and they're gonna enjoy it. You know, if the people at, and if the people that are driving the cars are fucking with the music, the people watching it are gonna like it. So absolutely. Or they're gonna learn about it because the driver is gonna be that hype and they're gonna yeah. post and it's just gonna be a thing. Yeah. So it was it was uh it was a surreal, surreal weekend, but it was what is Amazing. the craziest so far? And this is happening so much in real time. Like you, you like who knows? But I mean, like, this happened in the, what the race was this Tuesday, two days ago or three days ago. Yeah. So we still don't even know. But like so far as of recording this, what is the craziest thing that you have seen come of it? Or like, have you seen some crazy press outlet pick it up? Have it? Has anybody um, that you I mean, the, the people that ha like the people that are already aware of me that 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 commented on it or that like brought it up like holy shit you pulled this off that was you know that was cool but like there's been a decent amount of people i think that it's hard to quantify exactly when someone finds you or decides to follow you but there's been a couple like pretty popular people that have have kind of i've i've been seeing them making their way to my page recently where i'm like okay i think this is a, a ripple effect you know yeah yeah because i think it represents more than the actual nascar itself i think it's like you you didn't break a rule but you did something so different right that it got attention that like has anyone ever done that before well so i have to give props to this band avoid who was they 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 sponsored the car uh the same driver I don't know if they did like a full rap like me, but they, even their logo is on the uh, is on the side because you know the small logos on it. Yeah, they're on there, but they they had already been involved with it, and it, I kind of saw what they did on their scale, and I was like, oh, okay, I see how I can scale this up. So I have to give props to those guys. Those are the homies. Props to you for giving props. That's <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, that's cool. And I think you know, a couple people have done it. I heard Slayer tried to do it, but they couldn't get their rap approved because it was too scary or something yeah um how long will it stay on the car just one race oh wow oh it's like that huh yeah. damn just one race so when you see a car that's wrapped the whole season like they're dropping fucking stacks so much bread because oh, also crap. like that was the atlanta race but imagine like talladega or like the big races like it's you know it's cost more when it's a more popular race of you know course. so I'm actually hyped to hear too that it wasn't some crazy master elaborate plan because I think that when you look at things like that from afar, you can almost be discouraged. You're like, well, what the fuck is the point of me trying if this dude's out here sponsoring NASCAR? You just got to be, okay, like you just got to put yourself into positions where you could, things like this could fall in your lap. And you know, like the fact that I was down to go to Vegas in 30 minutes notice and then just went to the race. Like I had no idea what I was getting myself into. But on top of that, when it did fall on my lap, I think a lot of people would just would have been like, ah, oh, this is too, too little notice and like too outlandish. And I don't know if I can really quantify how this is going to pay off in the end. It was just like I had the opportunity and I saw how I could make it work for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I also think like you said that thing. Wow, I feel bad. The band that sponsored it. Avoid. Avoid. Like, okay, you, I, that represents quite a lot to me. It's like, Avoid did it, right? Right. But then you looked at it from your lens and you're like, how can I go crazy with this, right? And right. You did well, because so I didn't even big. know that it was, I didn't even know that that was something you could do 
So them doing it made it be like, oh, if they can do it, then like I can get in there somehow too. You know, like I didn't know that that like anyone could sponsor a NASCAR. Right. But I just like, I think that that represents so much more like everything you've done, you've full sent it. Yeah. Like before people were dyeing their hair every color, you're like, hey, I'm the kid with neon green hair. I made everything green. We have a hex code for this shit. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is like real life. <laughs> Can you trademark it? Can you get like your. your I mean, own? if you Google it, I come up 5EDB41. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the NFT of Lil Aaron is just that. <laughs> oh my God. But like, I just think that like, that's representative of you. Like you, you don't half ass things. Like you really fully, fully do it. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to like, I don't know, man. I've always kind of like dreamt big. And I feel like for so long I was kind of keeping my ideas small so that they made sense to other people. But like once I realized that it doesn't have to make sense to someone else before you do it, because you just got to do it and it'll make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like I was kind of se- like always selling myself short when I was younger because I was trying to make it make sense to people. But it doesn't have to make sense to anyone. Just do it. And then it'll make sense to them afterwards. You, you got to have people around you that trust the vision. You know what I'm saying? For For it to be able to happen. But like that's... I feel like that's the biggest life hack is like, just do it. Don't bother trying to explain it to people. Just show them, you know? That's so fucking huge, dude. Yeah. That's so, so huge. And it's like, I I also think that it's cool. Like, this is you saying this like pretty deep into your journey, right? Like, it's not like people will have that instantly. Right. But I love you learned it. You learned, you learn to trust yourself more and trust your instincts. And then you build a team that, that is able to execute these outlandish ideas. Yeah, yeah, that's true, right? Because like Nick is like down for it, right? Yeah. He's not the guy that's trying to reel you in. Right. He gets you. Yeah. And like when you- I when I Facetime him and I'm high as shit, and I'm like, <laughs> listen, he's like, all right, let's let's go. Let's like go. he knows when I'm about to just be like high as fuck, just rambling ideas. And nine times out of ten, like they are stupid. And I, the next day, I'm like, never mind. But like, there's always that one that it's like, that's just crazy enough that it might work. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, that's, I'm so glad that you shared that like that because yeah. I think that's so cool. And I think that that's how cool shit happens. And I think that's how, that's how genres get pushed. Right. And new ideas well, happen. To explain something, it has to be done before. So like, if you're doing something new, you just got to do it. Yes. Yeah. The, no one's going to believe it until they see it. You right. know, you can't like draw it. You have to just like do it. How would you have explained drugs back in 16? I think I was like, how did I explain it back then? I mean, at its core, it was just me. It was just me marrying the two things that I loved, you know? But there's no, like that song, you couldn't have said any amount of words to get that song out. That had to have been you. Right. There's no way before that song I could have explained what it sounded like. Exactly. But now you can point back and say, oh, that reminds me of drugs. Right, right. Case in point. I mean, without it being like, I think there was a blog at one point that was saying good Charlotte meets Travis Scott, which I think was a good, you know, if you have to give it a hotel or what's it called? A elevator. Elevator pitch. Elevator. Why did I say hotel? Yeah, elevator. <laughs> yeah, hotel. they do. Yeah, they got you. If you had to give it an elevator pitch, that that's what it would be. But um, but you know, it had to be done for it to be for people to understand it. And it even took years for people to come around to that song you know i think the underground embraced it but like that song gets that song is played at frat parties and like that song is played by like basic ass white girls now like (laughs) you know what i'm saying it went from like being an underground record to like normies like yeah you listen you look at the people that are like dancing to it on tiktok obviously you're gonna have your like cute little alt boys but like it really reached normie normie status is it at normie status now I mean, obviously, it's not the biggest song in the world, but like, I mean, look, bro, I'll tell you right now, we're probably about to hit 40 million on Spotify. What the fuck? Yeah. I haven't checked. I I, I mean, damn. Which I'm I'm not saying there aren't songs out there that have more, but 36 mil. Wow. And I posted the 30 mil update like not too long ago. So it's still going. Like it's not that like that's That song has never, 
like my graph let me show you this it's never gone anywhere but up like wow. my spotify graph for this song so month over month it, there's always more people discovering it wow that like kind of put me at ease with other songs that I do and other genres that I try where like it doesn't have to be accepted right away for people to come around to it. Also, um, from the Dark Matter EP, Dark Matter and last time I checked the record with Goody on that EP, like those both took a long time. Dark Matter had a little bit more of a instant, but like even still now people are just coming around to it. And last time I checked is like growing like crazy on Spotify now. It's like sometimes if you're trying new things and you're and you're and you're experimenting with shit sometimes it takes people a couple years to catch up with you you know that's also cool that's also cool to hear that because it's like don't get discouraged and stop yeah. that route yeah like just you keep. know just stay the course and keep trying new things and and you know don't be afraid to like don't let the numbers discourage you if you really believe it you know damn i feel like that's you know people numbers are a good sign of success when they're good but when they're low, it doesn't mean the opposite of that. It just means maybe the time hasn't come yet, you know? You have like shared so like so many things that you've said in my head. I'm just like, wow, yes, that. Like it's crazy. it's hard not to because our whole life now is based around numbers and you know, that's our easiest way to quantify status or success. Yeah. But like so many things in any form of art don't really see the shine that their their full potential is until you know there's a lot of art traditionally that didn't blow up until the artist died true yeah and not true. because the artist died like just ha so happened to be years after the artist died people started to realize that that art was special or something you know or yeah. or or was revolutionary or whatever it was but you know i think we live in a a oh, sick, twisted, capitalistic world where like people think that like your first week, if you don't get on these playlists, that the song is dead in the water. But it's just not how it works. Yeah. If you're if you're consistent and you keep putting shit out and and you keep your fans engaged, like people will find that record from 2016 or that record from 2019 or tw or that record from a week ago, a month ago, whenever. Like. If it's a great song, people will find it. it. There's if there's one good thing about the music industry now, it's that there's nothing stopping someone from finding your music. You know what I'm so saying? True. It's easier That's than it's so ever true. been for someone. If you make cool shit, all people want to do is find cool shit. Yeah. It, they're gonna find it. All you have to do is make the cool shit. And I could even like go a little deeper meta with that of like, I could look at my podcast and be like, this is not the world's biggest podcast by any means. Like in the scope, it is still pretty damn small. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm close to doing it for two years now. And even though it doesn't have some crazy numbers, like I'm sitting down with you, that's yeah. just because we're friends. Like that's yeah. just a real connection. So it's like, yeah. even with all of your music, like the times where you were working on something and the numbers didn't go crazy, like you still had so many people riding for you and you had right. so, so much support. And I will shout out, I, I do have to shout out like my fans, like my, my core fans, like, really do like ride for me and are and are there the day of you know i i have a really solid fan base um but you know as when it comes to impacting the the ripple after that and then the ripple after that it's like the core fans the people that are potential fans and then like the normies the like fucking People who don't seek out new music, it just yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they somehow heard drugs hear it. on TikTok. They somehow like, sure. heard it. Like they're not looking for it, you know. Yeah. But my core fan base has always been there and rode for me, and you know they give me shit because sometimes I take a little bit of time to get stuff out. But I'm a perfectionist, so yeah. I think we did the thing, dude. This was. I was I mean, the we're whole probably, thing. Well, I, we're probably. Yeah, we're right about an hour. That's that's what I shoot for. That was an hour. That felt like 15 minutes. Let's go. I love well, that. We can do bonus round. Let's do, Let's bonus, do a bonus round. round. I'm with All it. Right. I'm in so, it, bro. Earlier on Instagram, I posted of just like, hit me up with questions. I'm going to do a podcast with Aaron. Cool. And we got some pretty good ones. We got some pretty funny ones and also some good ones. All right. Let's hear so them. we'll just rapid fire them off. Give me whatever amount of long or short answer you want. Um, <sighs> you covered the NASCAR thing. People asked about the NASCAR thing. Here's a fun one. Inspiration for the sound on 808 Rock. Because you were pretty ahead on that. Um, 
I mean, I, I don't know if everyone knows that 808 Rock was made like three years before it came out. Yeah. Ooh, I'm so glad we're talking about this. Yeah. The inspiration on 808 Rock. I think, you know, once I nailed drugs and then I did Rockstar Famous, I, I kind of had this idea of like, okay, I can apply this new version of music or this new sound to my favorite rock sounds. So like started with pop punk and then pop rock. And then I was like, okay, what if I did the same formula, but instead of pop punk, it was like fucking Limp Biscuit and Linkin Park and like some of those like classic new metal records. Um, and just kind of did my own twist on that, had that energy. And so I linked up with Eric Ron. Who we, oh yeah. yeah. Shout out. Shout out to Eric Ron. And I mean, we made that, that wasn't like a, we locked in for a week and made it like that was like one day or one night, every four or five months we would link up Whoa. and make a song, you know, it was just kind of wherever our both, both of our, we didn't know what we were making at the beginning of it. You know, we were just making songs. Um, it was just whenever both of our, we both had an open day, we would just link up. So the inspiration, yeah, I would say Limp Bizkit, Linkin Park, Kid Rock. Yeah. You know. I think the very important piece though, which I'm so glad you Woodstock said. Woodstock 99. It, that's like the whole inspiration. <laughs> yeah, actually though. Yeah. Is it was done. It, it was made so much. Uh, it, it was done so far ahead of when it actually released. Right. And that was me trying to crack the code of if I made a record like drugs or like glowing pains that sonically was three years ahead of itself, how do I game the system? And, and, you know, it was an experiment. I think looking back on it, I think I, you know, waiting was smart, but at the same time, I don't think there's anything wrong with being early, but, but it is, also better to be on time. Yeah, that is a weird... It's a weird game to play, the timing game. Yeah, and I, I think that I've seen... I've definitely seen it with you where it's like something has been early. Like, yeah. I remember you. But the thing is, with the way Spotify is now, you really can't be too early. Fair, yeah, now. and But maybe that's changed because I literally remember being at Mini Mansion and you being like so about mixing rock and rap right. and like basically explaining to me 808 rock. Right. And in my head, I was like, I love you. I trust you. I know you're more tapped in than I am. But I was like, I don't get it. Right. I don't think anyone got it until it came out, you know? Yeah. Which it, again, exactly what we yeah, were talking about. Yeah, that's what about. I was saying earlier. And then it came out. So. Yeah. And you know, I I'm I love that project and I still want to revisit that sound and that experimentation of collaboration of genres and and working with producers that can really pull off that heavy sound, that heavy energy. I think me and Eric will definitely do more in the future. But uh this new EP I kind of just tapped back into my my sweet spot of that like pop rock emo shit. That's just yeah. like it's just too easy for me not to be doing. Yeah, like I'm it, too good at it. Actually, I will. I will straight up. I know this is sounds like I'm being cocky, but it's like up, but. I spent so much time being like, I'm not gonna make it. I already did the pop punk trap shit. Like I don't need to do it again. I'm gonna find the next thing. And then when I made I, that song, I just remembered I hate you, which I think I'm, that might be the first time I've ever said that title. So ooh, um, got that exclusive. I was like, okay why am I holding myself back from like the thing that my fans want and the thing that I can do in my sleep. And I was just like, I'd spent enough time away from it where I was like, I'm ready to do this again. So that's when we got that Airbnb and did the rest of the EP. And it, it like, it legit does feel so authentic and it's, it's like, yeah, like it, it's, it's like, I didn't have to try to be anything but myself. Yeah. Which I do. I don't hate on like, I do like trying to put myself in the shoes of, you know, other people and experiment. That's what I do as a songwriter. Yeah. I was going to say, you clearly write a bunch of pop music. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've written love songs from a girl's perspective. Like yeah. I, I can write a song from someone else's shoes, but it, it felt so true to like my middle school, high school self. You know, I was like, I, I made a record that if, if I was 13 or 14 and that, and I heard it, I would be in love with it, you know? Yeah. So that 
I'm really excited about I'm really excited about this new project. Yeah, me too. I get it. I I Thank get you. this one. I sure Thank fucking you. do. Thank you, man. So there you have it. Lil Aaron's episode. I hope you liked it as much as I did. It was such a cool one. I'm so inspired by him. I think he's just the raddest dude. And you probably noticed I cut it off at a bit of an abrupt point. At the very end of this episode, we had a bunch of listener questions and I did like a bonus round episode with him for the Patreon where you'll get a whole extra bonus episode where we rapid fire through the Q&As. But I felt like that first question was so good and I wanted to talk to him about 808 Rock. So I wanted to include that. So if you like that discussion and you want to hear more of it, go over to the Patreon. The entire thing is live there. That's just patreon.com slash where are all my friends. Or you can find a link for it on the website, which is just where are all my friends.com. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back next week with another episode. Drop comments. Let me know what other guests you want to hear from. All that good stuff. I'm always looking. I always want to talk to people that you guys want to hear from. I think that about says it all. Thank you as always for listening.